I've had a number of people ask, how do I organize all my bits and pieces for my large gazing ball project that I've been doing? And also, what do I do with all the offcuts, the shards from creating those roses, such as this one here? So I thought I'd just do a mini video just to show you what I do for my projects. And I just don't do it for this particular project. I do it for most of my projects. Now, when I've been uh, shaping these roses and I finished a particular color, for instance, if I finish this uh, red lot of roses that I need to do, all my shards are going to be here. Now, what I tend to do, and I've got some larger ones here. Now, what I tend to do is I just pick through the large ones that I want, the large pieces. All the, when I say the large piece, I'm talking about the pieces that I can cut up a little bit more and get some more out of them, rather than keeping all these shards, which I don't do. I know some people uh, do that. They won't throw anything out. But some of these are really quite small, so I won't be keeping these. But I do keep all these ones here. And all I do is I put them into a Ziploc bag. And what I'll generally do is I'll have a bag for every color. Now, if I'm doing, for instance, this particular one here where I'm using a very deep red and I'm using some lighter shades of red and yellow in my roses, then I'll just put them in the same bag. And the reason being is, and you can divide them if you want to, but the reason why I put them in the same bag is because I'm going to still continue making roses and I don't know how many I'm actually going to need. So I don't want to be too pedantic about separating each individual colour because I know these are pretty well reds and oranges. Then what I do is when I have my container here with my larger pieces of tester in, the same colours, I will put this bag in with those. And that means I can put this away and when I want to uh, create more red roses then I have all the colours that I need together here. Now I also have some larger pieces of stained glass that won't fit in this color uh, in this particular container, but that's not really an issue because uh, I've got them in a separate area. Now, how I store those roses, again in the previous videos that I've done, you've probably seen me put the plastic laminate over the top of them. I just put them in a container and put a lid on. And then when I'm going to uh, decide which size I'm going to use, I will actually tip these out on the table and just sort through them and I can then pick one that I want to do and add that to the gazing ball then I'll come back and pick another one so as I can work in with all the different sizes that I have created and by putting them in these containers it makes it really really easy and of course I do the same thing with my flower buds uh, for my rose uh, flowers and I also do the same with my pink roses as well now, of course, some people would prefer to just kind of like keep cutting and mixing up their colors of their shards and things like that. And then at the end of the day, they may, if they get time or at the end of their, the job that they're doing, they may get time to actually sort through those shards or they may not even be bothered about it. And that's fine as well. Now, when it comes to the leaves, I also apply the leaves to the laminate like I do with my roses. And I've done a previous video on that if you want to go and have a look. Now, one of the things I also do when I'm doing leaves is I put a piece of cardboard down and then a, a layer of leaves like that, and then another piece of cardboard and another layer of leaves, and I keep going until I've got the height that I want. That keeps it really organized and also makes it quite easy to actually get to those because I don't want to put a laminate on every uh, leaf that I create. It's much easier for me and quicker to just peel those off as I need them. And by having them on the cardboard, they're already laid out for me to be able to choose which size and which color that I want to go with. But if you don't want to do it that way, another alternative is to do it the same way as you would with your roses. And that's put in a plastic like takeaway container and then you can put the lid on and it keeps it all in one place. It's personal preference which way you would like to go. Now on the edge of my work table, I have this roll of laminate and I find it comes in really handy here because when I finished a, a bit of a project like a, let's say a rose or something like that, I can reach over, cut a bit off, something like that, and this will do two roses. And then I just uh, put this on top of the rose and it keeps it nicely together and I know exactly where this is. So it does save me time. I've had a few people ask, how do I actually design 
the rows, although I'm cutting it out as a rows, but what's my reference point to know that I'm actually doing it right besides looking at it and going that looks like a rose. What I generally do is I'll have a look around the garden. Uh, you can also uh, print out some color photos from the internet to give you a little bit of inspiration and direction on uh, where you wanna go with your rose. And also what I like to do is also print out black and white images such as this. And this gives me, what I like about this is this gives me the actual design of the petals as well. And also the leaves, if I wanna create these leaves, they're quite easy to do. So I find this works really well for me and I put my own spin on it, like my roses are not like these. But that's just because it's art and I just do my own thing. But this is a good idea to see the formation of the rose. And if you're looking at the rose from a certain angle, you're going to have more petals over this side and less petals over this side. Same as this one here, you'll see less of the center because you're looking up at the rose. So this gives you a really good idea if you're after a bit of direction on your roses. So I just thought I'd let you know, this is how I do my roses and my leaves. I just get on the internet, have a look around, and then choose something that I can work with, and then I just create my own style of it. Now over here I have a separate table where I've actually laid out all the stained glass that I'm going to be using for the gazing ball. Now I could leave this in the actual uh, cabinet where I store all the stained glass, but the problem with that is that I need to see pretty quickly as to whether it's the right color, whether it's opaque or semi-transparent, and also the right shade of color. So having it on this table, I'm able to see pretty well instantly what I'm looking for. Now I might have to sort through a few sheets of it to get to the exact shade that I'm after, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot quicker than keeping it in a cabinet. Now once I've finished the gazing ball, then all this glass will be filed away, or what's, what's left will be filed away, but I expect to go through pretty well all this glass anyway. So it's really better to spend a little bit of time sorting through things at the end of the day than just leaving it until you actually finish the project because it's going to be chaos by then. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've taken something away from it. If you have a comment, put it down in the bottom of the comment section on the YouTube channel. Let me know how you keep your studio organized when you've got a fairly large project on the go and how you sort through your Tessera. I'm always interested in uh, reading people's comments and I know many of my viewers are as well. And if you like the video, give it a like, share it if you feel it's got value to it, and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.